Well, Amazing Atheist, or formerly known as The Amazing Atheist, uh, and somewhere between there, he was T.J. Kirk or Thomas Kirk, and then realized that name didn't go over as well, so he switched back over to Amazing Atheist. I don't know why he didn't put the in front of it anymore, but uh, anyway, oh man, his appearance has sure changed over the years, hasn't it? I mean, mine has changed over the years too, but man, his, his current look is really disheveled looking, uh, and he shaves his eyebrows now. Um, I don't know why one would shave their eyebrows purposely. I mean, mine are, are thin, and I usually filled them in, but since I've been wearing these glasses, I've decided to stop wearing the makeup on my eyebrows. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, his views on a number of things has changed quite a bit over the years. Um, he's more of a Dusty Smith kind of uh, person, even though uh, for quite a while on Twitter, if... If anyone followed Dusty Smith, Cult of Dusty, um, he would he had a bot that automatically blocked people. I don't know whether he still does that. If he does, that's strange because he and Dusty have very similar views now. But whatever. Man, his views on censorship have very, very much changed over the years. And let's look at some of it. Right-wingers in my comments tell me I'm pro-censorship, right? Which I'm like, um... Yeah, and <laughs> then I censor them, right? <laughs> That's very classy. Oh, uh, I'm so tired, honestly, of the um, empty admonitions of the pseudo principled. You know what I mean? I'll agree with you on that. There's a lot of right wingers who claim to be so principled, but when you put them up to a situation that uh, they don't like very much, their principles fall apart. Dorks without lives lecturing me about how I, like, used to be pro-freedom of speech, man. You used to be pro-freedom. What happened to you? <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, you used to kind of have a bullying kind of mindset to some degree, and you don't anymore, so. Right-wingers, you know, your, your guys' declarations of what, like, freedom lovers you are would be way more convincing to me if you didn't support fascist candidates and uh, policies at every friggin turn how are you defining fascism though uh, i mean like you hate freedom in the abstract that's my problem with you you know you, you hate it in the abstract you only want it for yourself and even then it's like you're scared of having too much of it you're right. Uh, they seem to have, a, many of them seem to have a problem when there's too much freedom, you know, in the wrong areas. You know, they, they try to pretend they're for small government, but they're for big government and people's personal lives. At least many of them are. You're afraid that if you actually had the freedom to like, I don't know, be gay or question your gender, then you might be too tempted to do it. And because that possibility is scary to you. You want to like hyper aggressively go on this weird quest to stop anyone else from having those freedoms all the while talking about what a freedom lover you are. I've only seen rare examples of people on the right arguing that consenting adults shouldn't be able to do what they want. Okay. Most of this stuff seems to be revolving around what's being taught in schools. And it's like, you cannot have it both ways. If you love freedom, you love freedom. You don't love freedom. Most pathetic of all, by the way, is your supposed love of freedom of speech, which you, oh, you want to say it, and he's, oh, reverent to freedom of speech. Oh, the reverence. Oh, what about freedom of speech? Something like a ghost. <gasps> you might as well be a ghost, because the concept is dead, okay? I mean, it's kind of dead on big tech platforms, but it, it, the concept isn't dead. The principle isn't dead. Um, you know, it'd be a lot more believable freedom of speech uh, guy, you know? He'd be a lot more believable in the role you've cast yourself in as this great champion of freedom of speech. If you weren't, like, currently backing the political party that's, like, in full-on book-burning mode right now, trying to remove LGBT uh, books 
from libraries around the country. Libraries, guys. Yeah, that is getting to book burning kind of territory, isn't it? Not like, you know, private bookstores or something. Not like your own private book collection or like something that's being funded by you exclusively and, you know, that you should, you know, I deserve some control of it. Like public libraries that are supposed to be for everybody. You think you have the right to just control that to prevent books from being in there that you don't like. But meanwhile, you're, you're pro freedom of speech. It's like you have no principles, you have no consistency, you make no sense, you're a bunch of freaking imbeciles. Yeah, just about everyone on the Daily Wire fits that profile, especially Michael Knowles, who had a video of mine taken down because I was mean to him. I don't, I mean, like, give me a break, you stupid motherfuckers. You don't believe in freedom of speech. Get comfortable with that fact. You don't. You're right, but that shouldn't mean that we shouldn't believe in freedom of speech either. The freedom that you do believe in is just the freedom to be a bigoted piece of shit. True, and in the early days of YouTube, even you were involved in being a bigoted piece of shit towards theists. Not that they don't deserve it sometimes, but still. And you also were quite an anti-SJW too, so... But we've changed, we've all changed. Well, we've hopefully changed. That's it. That's that's all you really want. The freedom to like look at a black person and be like, fucking lazy mo You know what I mean? To look at a trans person. Oh, you ain't really. Fuck you. That's all you care about. That's all you want to use your precious gift of freedom of speech for. That's certainly true in a lot of cases, but not all. You don't actually care about the rights of, of like citizens of this country to like petition the government for a redress of grievances or to like, I don't know, stand up for something that matters. Well, unless it's something that they think matters. Or to speak truth to power. You literally just want it so you can talk shit to minorities. That's all you care about when you say, I have freedom of speech, man. That's the only freedom of speech you care about. You care about the freedom to be a fucking asshole. That and that alone. There are a lot of people like that, but there are also people who want to be able to call out stupid ideas. Um, if you really believed in freedom of speech, you know, you would believe in the freedom to, to, you would believe that people have the freedom to say things that shock, offend, and disgust you personally. The most revolting, horrible, hideous thing that you disagree with so vehemently to the very core of your being, you would still support the right of that thing to exist and for people to go listen to it if they so desired. But that describes like roughly 0.001% of you, okay? I very, very much disagree with the numbers you pulled out of your ass. So don't give me this freedom of speech horse shit. You don't believe in it. You don't care about it. None of you meet the standard I've just laid out. So piss off out of my comments. You know nothing. Wanker. Scumbag. Puddles of useless puke. Do you feel better now? And you know what, even if you do meet the criteria that I laid out a second ago, you know what, good for you, but still kind of just fuck off. I don't care. Well, I mean, it's obvious you don't really care. You, you are all right with the notion of a ministry of truth. Because you're absolutely right. I don't consider myself a free speech absolutist at this point. Well, no, you're definitely not a free speech absolutist, but I wouldn't even say you're for free speech in general anymore. You know, I used to be naive enough to believe that the truth would always prevail over lies in a so-called open marketplace of ideas, but I'm 37 years old now, and I'm too old to believe in fairy tales like that. One of the big problems is that a lot of people on the left are terrible at defending their ideas. They're terrible at defending against right-wing propaganda. They're terrible at it. If we were better at it, you know, this wouldn't be as much of an issue. But they are terrible at it. I don't believe in your right to be a fucking liar. The thing is, 
you would call some people liars even if they're stating what they believe is true. I do tentatively believe in your right to be a douchebag, but do it in your own space because I would no more allow the shit from your mouth to touch my ears than I would allow the shit from your ass to touch my carpet. So take your little garbage brain on the fucking road because it's not welcome here. I'm not interested, motherfucker. So you're essentially saying my way or the highway. Great. One of these fucking days, folks, and it won't be long now, one of these, one of, one of two things is going to happen, all right, in this country. I don't mean to sound Tim Poolish with the Civil War talk or anything, but like either the right is going to put us all in camps. What are you seeing that I'm obviously not that gives you this impression? I've been surrounding myself with tons of right-wing propaganda, right-wing pundits, and I haven't seen anything that leads me to believe that that's the eventual route they want to go. Where are you getting these ideas from? I mean, I've heard some of the Christian fundamentalists say that the Bible says that that uh, LGBT should be killed. But are those the people that have power? Are those the people that have a large voice? Are those the people that are making all these statements? Not that I've been seeing. What, what have you been seeing that gives you this idea of the right that I am not seeing. And we're gonna be the next Holocaust or we're gonna stop them from doing that before before it's too late. I guess I just don't see it as, the, I mean, people tried to say that say these types of things when Trump was in office. Oh, oh fascism, fascism is coming. Do we have fascism? I mean, yeah, we're, we're seeing the Supreme Court do some awful things, but is that fascism? Is anything that promotes traditional views in any way is that fascism do we have to only promote newer ideas and anything that pushes against those newer ideas is fascism i mean and and again what about stuff that's being taught in schools should teachers be allowed to be activist teachers teaching young children how to be activists is that right and as of right now, it seems like our means of fighting back is like, we just need to vote real, real hard, you guys. If that's the solution, just fucking pack your, your bags because you're heading to Auschwitz, motherfucker. I'm seeing a clash. I'm seeing the potential of a civil war, but I'm not seeing concentration camps. I just don't see it. So get a gun, learn how to use it, and be ready at a moment's notice to defend yourself and your loved ones because these motherfuckers are getting bolder by the day. They are openly calling for your death. Religious fundamentalists are saying those sorts of things. Yes, I've seen it. I've seen the footage. I even, I was going to make a response video to one of theirs. Uh, it was like a 40 minute video. I was just like, yikes. You know, yeah, there's there's people, there's there are some religious fanatics that are saying these sorts of things. And you know what? They've been saying the same sorts of things for 30 years. Uh, they are putting the, the pieces uh, in place to steal whatever elections they need to steal. They own the courts. The Democrats are inept at best, uh, colluders at worst. The American project, the project of let's try a country called the United States of America, guess what? It has failed. The three major superpowers of the earth, China, Russia, and the United States, are all authoritarian regimes. True, but I'd say that the United States is less authoritarian than China or Russia. Uh, authoritarian nightmares. There is nowhere to run or to hide from what is coming. Oh, there's some bad things coming, that's for sure, but it's not concentration camp level. There is no safe harbor. There is nowhere where you can just kind of wait it out and let someone else fight the battle for you. Make your peace with that and start readying yourself because soon you're going to be faced with a choice, okay? And that choice is going to be between obedience or resistance or certain destruction. If there's any hope of diplomacy, then there's gotta be fear in the hearts of our enemies, you guys. And right now, there is no fear. There's no fear in their hearts. It's all in ours. They have a lot of fear, or they wouldn't be acting like they are. They have nothing to fear from us because we're weak, we're soft, we're the let's be reasonable character that gets shot at the beginning of the movie. They fear a number of protesters. They fear Antifa.
They fear them. So there's no incentive for evil to bargain with us. Evil doesn't bargain from a position of fear. I mean, evil only bargains from a position of fear, never from a position of reasonability. You're making the statement that these people can't be reasoned with, and yet our side is the one that's being the most unreasonable. We're the ones that calls anyone who disagrees with even a tiny little bit of what we say, we call them something that ends in isterphobic. I mean, come on. You know, yes, there are some people that want to be reasonable. There are some that don't. There are some that just want to do name calling like you're saying. But there are a number of them that are trying to be reasonable and we're not being reasonable at all. We're just name calling and expecting it to stick. Evil is never like, huh, well, you were fair to me. I'm going to be fair back to you. See, even right there, you're making the declaration that they're evil. And if someone's evil, well, then they can't be reasoned with. So let's not try to reason with them. That's that's basically what you're doing here. That's not how evil operates, all right? Evil is like, mine, give, ah, ha, ha, ha. If, if you won't give it, to, you know, if, if, okay, they have an agenda. They want what they want. And what they want is your ass served up on a platter. And if you if they can get you to give it to them, they'll do that. But if you won't give it to them, they will fucking take it, okay? Our side is in control of a lot of institutions. And when we see the opportunity to take power, we do. Our side does this too. So I guess that's all I have to say for today. Uh, get strong. Get strong, my brothers, my sisters, my siblings in power. Get strong and then get stronger because you're going to need it. Yeah, we need to be strong. We need to prepare. As I've said in several of my last videos, yeah, we, we need to be prepared for what's coming. We need to be mentally prepared because a lot of changes are coming. I don't know whether it's as bad as what TJ is saying here about, you know, there being concentration camps. I don't think it's going to be like that, but we are going to have a battle ahead of us, so... Stay strong.